Perry here at the Northeast Waters and Society and today I'm just going to give you some quick tips for when you're going on your shopping trips. Now for some of us shopping is a really fun thing. I know that I absolutely love shopping particularly for shoes and bags. Um, I don't like food shopping so much though um, but for some people shopping can really be a distressing experience and for autistic people and those that have got sensory differences it can actually be really really challenging environment to be in. So the first tip I would give you is think about do you actually need to go shopping um, with your child or young person? Can you do online shopping or can you do click and collect so you don't even need to go near the supermarket? Um, that might be good for some people that just taking them to a supermarket would cause so much stress and anxiety. It's actually not even worth, um, worth doing it, okay? Second thing to think about is if you have to brave the shops and you've got to go, make sure you plan ahead. So pack for the occasion, make sure you've got your toolkit with you that I talk about in all the videos and um, make sure that the person has what they need when they're in that environment. So things to help them cope and self-regulate, whether that is a um, furry toy or a book or some ear defenders or a fidget spinner. Um, music, whatever it is, make sure that it's packed and it's taken with you so that the person's got that in what is often a really difficult, challenging environment for the person. Um, so yeah, planning ahead is really, really key. Even things like thinking about where you're going to park, think about the layout of the shop, because I know there's nothing worse than getting to a supermarket and somebody's changed around the aisles and they've moved the bread. So the bread was in aisle one and now it's in aisle 10. That can be really stressful for any of us, but for somebody, for an autistic person who has um, sensory differences and the environment's causing them such a problem, that's gonna add more time to already what is a distressing time, okay? Think about the executive function differences of the person. So think about the ability, um, you know, the executive function refers to the ability to plan and prepare and sequence information and problem solve. So make the journey as um, easy as you can by supporting them to navigate it. So that means that you break the activity down for them. So rather than just saying, right, we're gonna go shopping, you might actually need to do it in five, 10, 15, 20 different steps for the individual. So you could do that visually, you could do it, you could write it down. They could have an audio cue on the phone and um, you could use a watch, all of these different things just to give them an idea of actually what happened happens when you go shopping. Some of the families I work with will have a list that they'll tick off. So at each step of the journey or the process of shopping, it gets ticked off. And that allows the person to be able to see when the activity is also coming to an end, okay? Um, can you ring ahead to the shop? So I would absolutely ring ahead supermarkets and ask when is your busiest and your quietest time? And again, that just might, um, you know, make it that little bit easier for you and your family. Think about, um, I know some of my families will use a snack as um, as a distractor, I suppose, in some instances. But remember, if you the kind of sucking and chewing action can be quite calming on the nervous system as well. So some of my families will use a lollipop that they'll give their children or the young people at the beginning of the journey when they get to the shop. And then hopefully lollipops sometimes, if you're like me, I bite them. Um, but sometimes will last a while. Um, so the idea is that that will act as a distractor as they go around the shop. Can you get them involved in shopping? So I've seen a really lovely um, activity from a well-known supermarket a few years ago where they'd actually printed off loads of different images of the things that the people were going to buy while they were shopping and they came on Velcro and the person would pull them off when they got put into the basket or the trolley. That is absolutely brilliant because shopping can be such a really good learning opportunity for learning numbers and literacy and knowledge and understanding of the world. Um, so you can get lots of learning in a shopping trip if that's appropriate for you and your family. Um, think about obviously the demands when you're going through the checkout at the end as well. And you know, don't you know it's about relaxing those social expectations, I suppose. So you know. It's it can be really difficult for autistic people if they feel they've got to behave in a certain way when they get to the checkout. So they've got to say hello and they've got to engage in small talk. All that can be really difficult for people. So it's about trying to relax some of those social um, norms, as it were, or those social expectations. OK, so I hope that was useful. We hope you have many successful shopping trips and we shall see you all soon. Thanks. Bye.